first blood will go down onto safety. So safety gets the first blood onto that one. That invade, I would say, is a huge success for SAJ. I think that was very careless for HK perhaps because the timing he went in was around like 0, 4, 5, and that's usually about 10 seconds too late because you need to be there by around the 0, 3, 2 or 0, 3, 3 mark so that you'll be able to see if any of them were to invade. And I think this comes boils down to the fact that uh, most teams right now are not invading at the start due to the fact that you do not have enough wards to maintain vision control over your buffs. Hence, were you to invade the opponent's jungle, you are leaving your side of the map open, not knowing what the opponents are doing. So that is why teams don't invade and hence HK was quite unprepared. Yeah, HK was unprepared for that one ED, perhaps just got shot down instantly, giving the kill up to safety. And I want to point out safety's item pickups once he back to the base. He picks up a stealth ward as well as a vision ward for his first item buy, so he wants to get that commanding vision control in the in the game itself. What do you think about that pickup? Right now with the with Pink Wars being 25 go cheaper than you than previous patch. In fact, SAJ when he played against us yesterday, all their lanes were buying ping wards, even their AD carry. It gives them a lot of map control and it becomes a contested buff where they are able to bait gangs against you. That's going to be very scary coming in. So let's take a look at the lane matchups that we know lane swaps coming in for both sides. It's going to be QTV in the top lane up against Mythic Q on Shivana. So it's a Rengar Shivana matchup in the top lane. In the mid lane, it's going to be Optimus on Orianna up against Pasa VC. Optimus already asserting authority, just pushing to the mid lane very strongly. And in the bot lane, it's going to be Archie and Juni, Lucian as well as Tarek up against Endgod on Tristana and perhaps on Morgana. So all the lanes are going to be pretty evenly matched up, I feel. And coming into this, the top lane duel is going to be very interesting because Rengar and Shavana, like you said, Shavana able to deal with most top lane champions, but Rengar able to go in through the brush, leap, walk back out, leap again. It's going to be very ir irritating. In the it, it just looks like it's going to be a fun fest for all three lanes because all three lanes do not have the Q potential. They just be waiting for the jungle to come. So if both jungles decide to farm, then there will not be any action for most of the most of the starting game. But as you can see, Lee Sin should be going down towards border and making a move. Not too sure. Yeah, we may see some aggression, knowing that both junglers are very aggressive. Jungler safety, like we said earlier in the pregame, banter a little bit. Both safety and Phi are very aggressive jungles in. And like you said, Phi will be coming down this rush here. There are no walls to spot him out just yet. And he may go in for a sneaky gang. But if he does walk into this next rush, however, he will be spotted by this ward. But perhaps... Doesn't have the sweeping lens of cooldown at this point of time, so he will not be able to kind of clear this ward out. Yep, so with wards being in every lane, it seems like bottom is the only lane to gank, but... Whoa, we do... That Sonic Wave will hit a minion though, so the follow-up resonating strike will not be able to deal any damage onto Archie. Archie and Juni get out of that one quite healthily, and N got dot taken down very low by the burst combo coming in from Lucian. So the main thing about this patch, the current patch, is that if as a jungler you were to camp lanes and go for a gang, if it doesn't work, you'll be behind the opponent jungle by a lot. Because right now camps give uh, spawns faster and they give a lot of gold, so you need to keep farming in order to keep up. So with that gang fail, you can see that safety with the first blood, as well as the additional minion kill from being farming in the jungle right from the start, is going to give him a more of a hit start, especially when he gets to 6. Yeah, he does get that slight gold lead against by in the jungle, it's about 300 gold coming in, maybe QTV actually kind of battering it out with Mythic Q. Gets down very low, but we'll have that battle round to kind of just heal back up on itself. You see that immense amount of heal coming in, so the sustain on the side of QTV should allow him to kind of bully out Mythic Q in the lane if there's no gank jungle pressure, but we do see Fi waiting on the side. He may go in for a gank very shortly. So let's just see, we do have Mythic Q kind of pushing up a bit, but QTV doesn't really want him to get any sort of lane advantage. We will have Fi walk up very shortly. It's gonna be very it's gonna be a very dangerous situation coming in from QTV. And like you said earlier, Kyling, the matchup gonna turn out very even, but I feel that Renga does have that innate sustain coming in, but the push potential coming in from Mythic Q is definitely gonna help. And be in his favor. Yeah, Rengar does very well against champions like uh, Shavana and Renekton because they lack the burst necessary to take on Rengar. Whoa, the Sonic Wave will miss and fight and not really hitting very accurate Sonic Wave this game. But like you said, the 
matchup against Rengar is going to be, you know, in his favor, especially against champions like Shyvana and Renekton. But there was a trick that uh, QTB used there where he will walk towards the brush and if there's someone there, the person will come out. So he will walk in towards the brush and back off at the last second slightly just to see if they were to come out, which they did. So that was a good play by QTB right there. Well, so a little bit of tricks and maneuvers coming in from QTV on his Rengar. We do see another failed gank attempt coming in from Fire. This will allow Safety to kind of get ahead in levels a little bit. Let's take a look at the experience coming in. So, Safety nearly hitting level 5 and Fire here just... Oh, actually, Fire has that advantage probably because of the minions coming in the lane. Either that or he's able to get a little bit more out of it. What do you think? Uh, I think it's because of the minion and on the lane, but I have a question what uh, SAJ Safety was doing throughout the time that Lee Sin was doing the ganks both at bottom and top since he was supposedly farming. I don't know, he's camping mid lane. I've seen him in this brush as well as the other side lane brush quite some time as well. We will see Fi pull off a little bit of a counter jungle. Safety will be there to respond, however, he does put down ward. Safety does kind of spot Fi out, so... You know, safety kind of wasting some time camping the mid lane, unable to gank that slippery Ezreal actually. So, very interesting choice of lane to go in for the gank. Uh, not too sure. So what I've seen from uh, safety so far was that he was walking top when Lee Sin was bottom. And after Lee Sin failed gank at bottom, he was Kha'Zix walked down and didn't do much. And after when Lee Sin went top, Kha'Zix also wasn't doing much. So, not too sure what safety is doing for the, for, for the first 4 minutes. Yeah, very interesting coming in because usually safety, like we talked about earlier in the pre-game that Whoa, the stun does come out and God gets the black shield onto him and will rocket jump away But like I said, safety in the pre-game banter, we were talking about it earlier He's usually quite an aggressive jungler and tries to snowball his lane But he hasn't really been doing much of that in this game I think the main thing Safety should have been doing for the past 5 minutes should have been farming his 6 ASAP, get his items up, get some mobility and get the gangs going. But he seems to be a bit slow right now. Hopefully he'll be able to catch up and get some of the gangs going down. Yeah, hopefully. So the only kill so far is still on to Safety. Juni does get hit by the Dark, Binding and Cemented Sword. And we do see that Relic Shield coming into play, allowing him... Whoa, Safety taken down very low! Probably just because of that mint of that small... The, the Golden Cam, I mean. And... We do have here the Relic Shield, like I said, going into this one, sharing already 65 gold. So Juni there making quite good use of his Relic Shield and able, not only that, that prop on the um, the minion sharing itself will allow RG to just kind of heal back up as well. Yep, so most mini supports, in fact, all mini supports will go uh, Relic Shield because aside from sharing the gold, you also has the execute function, which works very well and he is able to get gold at the start and get the extra tanker ability from the goal and enable him to be more aggressive in lane. Now, why do you think the Tariq support has kind of come back? I talked about the aura, the walking aura totem that Tariq is right at this point of time, but is there anything else? You said that Juni played a very mean Tariq, able to kind of just solo out the aggression coming in from yeah, Kala. Uh, the main thing right now in the current meta is that with supports getting more gold, they're able to get more items, and this makes Tariq very scary because with his Ulti pet aura, he gets really painful because at uh, at level 6 is 30, 80 and 80, at 11 is 50 and at 16 is 70. Well we do have Mythicube Force to use and the double leap coming in from QTB and safety. So Predator and Predator will start to hunt down this dragon as well as the flash coming in. Mythic Q still very tanky, the bowler strike will come down. But it seems that Mythic Q will be to get away from this one and now we have pass out on the sidelines taking safety down very low. This is gonna be very dangerous. QTB hops back into the fight, uses that battle roar to kinda of heal him up a little bit. Safety onto the sidelines, just juking it out. Will pass out be able to pick up safety. The jump comes in, pass out taken out very low force to flash away and QTV take Pasa down very low so no kills just yet but a very extended fight for both mid laner, top laner and the jungler coming in from SAJ as well as HKA. HK got really lucky there where both their mid lane and something did not die and a bit unfortunate on SAJ side. So yeah as I was saying about the Tarek so with the LT passive he gets really painful and with more items coming with the current meta, current patch He's able to get really tanky and hence really painful and be able to just zone out junglers and even carry sometimes Since you're not able to kill Terry because with his uh, Shattered passive he has got a hell lot of armor and with his ulti passive he has got a lot of damage 
just very scary coming in. So the walking aura bot of Tariq. Should we should see some, some crazy plays coming from Juni? Something to fear on a Tariq support in this current meta. But we did see that so-called failed kill attempt on both sides at all. We do have QTV and safety burning both their flashes as well as the ignite. We did see Pasa rotate down, burn his flash and ignite as well. Mythic Q still holding on to that ignite. It's gonna help him in lane quite a bit, but does pop that ghost just to get away from. that one so here in the mid lane let's kind of take a look at the cs coming in from both sides we do have Fi taking a cs lead in the jungle he does get that slight advantage coming in but in the mid lane though we do have oriana kind of bullying out pasa but we did see pasa rotate to the top that's probably the main reason why we do have optimus get that slight cs advantage coming in yep also from the third gang on top uh what mr q did was it was something that when I was still starting on LL and I was watching Hot Shot GG from CLG stream. He was saying he was giving out advice and I think that was very crucial which is whenever a fight starts, make sure you start porting up. And that was exactly what uh, saved Mr. Q from dying there where he kept porting up and both QTV and Safety were unable, unable to get a kill from there. Yeah, that's gonna be so, pro tip from Piling as well as Hotshot GG, make sure you pot up when you start a fight. So we do have that dirty farming coming in from Mythic Q. Shivana has been known to have exceptional wave clear and it will just kind of force QTV to do a little dirty farming on his own. But this will allow Mythic Q to pick up the white camp as well in the jungle. So a little bit of counter jungling coming out from the side of HKA. But that first blood gold lead is still being kept quite well by SAJ. And it's very funny to compare the AD carry CS at this point in time because 17 of this goes to Tarek and it's effectively shared with RG as well. So we do have HK style on the Dragon right now. So they do get that slight map control getting that pink board down. And they do take the Dragon uncontested but SAJ does have the timing on that one. So they will be able to contest the next Dragon coming up. Feels like a pro play coming for SAJ because SHJ's comp should definitely have a superior map control over HK's comp and it's just surprising that they were not able to get the dragon control. Yeah, it is surprising indeed and look at what Mythic Q is doing. Just claiming the entire blue side jungle of SAJ in his own name and we will have QTV constantly just pump it up here in the top lane. So both instead of a it's it's what you said, it's good just gonna be a complete farm fest. They are uneven they aren't even dueling up against each other. Yep. So I think this has to do mainly about uh, with safety's Kha'Zix because especially with the first bug going to him, he would, should definitely have had a bigger impact on the game and had more attempts to snowball further but that isn't coming in so far for the first 13 minutes. Yeah, that didn't come in at all and Fi's aggression has kind of measured what withered down a little bit as well. He failed two ganks, one in the bar lane and one in the top lane and he, you know, says, I'm just going to farm it up. So, very interesting play coming in from both junglers, unlike what they usually like to do since both of them are quite aggressive coming in. Yep, as I said, the main thing about the current meta is that, current patch is that too many wards on all five players make life as a jungler really tough. Yeah, we do see Optimus try to get the blue buff, but it seems that Pasa will just be, you know, happy taking his blue buff, knows that Optimus as well as safety are waiting for him so both of them take that long route just to prevent any sort of gang coming in. So with the dragon pickup we do have the goal lead now extending to about 500 gold in favor of Hong Kong attitude so nothing just yet 14 minutes into the game but I do like to point out a lot of core items have been hit. It's very interesting to see SAJ Optimus actually pick up a tier of the goddess on an Oriana so early we usually see them pick up the Athene's Unholy Grail first so very interesting pickups on both sides and the tier as well being charged up on Ezreal. Infinity Edge already completed on Tristana and Archie has his Blood Cluster in his own team as well and on the top laner side both of them have the Sunfire Kit will be burning out against each other so quite a stale matchup so far. Yeah, I think the four players will just continue farming until the next objective which is probably Dragon all the next buff. I don't see much action coming in, although Lee Sin is trying to gank top, but Renga should be able to get away scot free regardless. Yeah, Lee Sin is there camping up in the top lane. I was just checking the health on all the turrets. It seems that they are actually gone 
not much damage at all so in the next objective you are right it should be either a buff or possibly a dragon coming back up within the next few minutes or so we did see hk take up that dragon earlier so it's just gonna be a farm fest all this game who do you think kind of wins out in the late game i know we've talked about saj's comp a little bit we said that the team fight coming in for saj is quite strong but hk we weren't really sure what they plan to do but we do have a game coming in by pops that war gets that kick out with the flash qtv counter flashes pops the ultimate and it seems that you know flash for ultimate and flash for flash as well but we do have a gang coming in qtv will throw that bowler strike out slowing mythic q a bit optimus coming into the wicks gets the shock wave down mythic q taken down extremely low mythic q will go down now safety in a bunch of trouble Fi able to pick that one kill up and now optimus tanking up picks up the counter kill onto Fi. so it's gonna be a two for one trade jungle and top laner for oh wow look at the damage coming out onto perhaps he just gets melted down by the combination of juni as well as archie the burst damage potential coming from Tarragon and Lucian, very scary. Yep, but uh, I would mention that Optimus played really well there. He anticipated a Dragon Form from coming from Mr. Q and, and stopped the Dragon Form mid-flag and that contributed to the SAJ getting both kills. Yeah, that's right. So we were talking about it earlier, how stale this game was, but suddenly a bunch of kills popping onto the map. Now, with that, we do have SAJ taking that goal lead now, but Pasa here trying to deal it out. Will Miss that true shot barrage and it seems like Pasa will go down to Optimus a little bit greedy there for that tower goal I feel and it seems that Optimus will pick another kill up to himself has a death cap already two kills and two assists in his name but Fi coming in will Optimus actually go down to Fi he does get the, get the sonic wave flashes but follows with the resonating strike and seems that Optimus will go down Fi take it out very low gets exhausted and Fi will survive after that ward jump coming in as you were saying that Pasa was getting too uh, overzealous in getting the tower or too greedy. Same thing for Optimus, he wanted to get more minions and die as a result. Yeah, so a little bit greedy for most coming into this game. So we do have the first turret of the game, sorry. First turret of the game actually coming in from HKA, but we do see SAJ take down both the top as well as the bot outer turret so that will allow them to keep their goal lead it's now only at about 900 gold dragon will be coming up in another 40 seconds none of the major cooldowns have been kind of blown away they should be able to come back off cooldown come the next dragon fight so after that long farming situation who do you think kind of wins it out because the goal is pretty even coming into this game i would still have to favor SAJ's call because I can't see how HK, HK is able to team fight this unless Lee Sin does a uh, insect where he kicks someone back. If not, it will just be HK waiting for SAJ to make a move. Where Optimus is able to like chain his ulti along with Rengar or Tarek and Kha'Zix is able to initiate. Yeah, so it's going to be very scary on the side of HK. Perhaps they get out very low. Blows a flash, the calling will pick him up. And now QTV jumps in and tries to get onto Endgar, but to no avail. Five force to kind of safeguard to the ward there. And it seems that SAJ's rotations have been quite pinpoint. They do pick up a kill onto him, perhaps, as well as that Tara Vantage coming in. They take down the outer middle turret and they rotate down to Dragon. Yep, really solid play coming for SAJ where. Because both top and bottom towers are down, so they all move to meet at the same time when Dragon was spawning. Get a kill, a tower, and a Dragon at the same time. Yeah, that was very good rotations. I mean, they knew the Dragon timer because of that one ward that earlier that HK was unable to kind of spot out. So they planned it perfectly, got a kill, got the turret, and forced HK to just kind of back off. And now they may just get that blue buff as well. See, that's for the spike. UTV in a little bit of danger. Spell immune due to the back shield. Pass out with kind of favor his chances come. It does come from Juni, however, my mic kind of stuttering a bit, so sorry about that. And they do get that blue buff, so one kill onto perhaps one middle outer turret, one dragon, as well as one blue buff. I would say overall, SA are going to be very happy with those pickups. Yep, definitely, and they deserve that after a really good rotation coming in. Their movement was very good, and that was their reward. And you were right, we do see an AP as well forward to see what kind of stats a little bit too late to check it out he does have six percent armor and magic penetration from that offense tree though so we do have optimus kind of trying to deal with mythic q pulls out the shot with archie comes in forces the dragon's descent coming out the ignite will start to take away the mythic q will try to kind of out juke him but he will face qtv and juni so give them the assist as well so he will not be able to run away from that gang coming in 
So one has to wonder why four people of SAJ are on top, even though they did get the kill, because at the cost of it, they lose bottom tower. Whoa, are they going to start on back? I do not think so. We do have a pause coming in for either side, maybe some connection or technical difficulties. And in that pause, let's kind of talk about the item pickups. Oh, okay, the, it's going to be, the play is going to resume soon, but we do have the Spirit Research onto QTV. And they do start up the Baron 20 minutes into the queue down. My mic was a bit off there. Um, we do see SAJ kind of start off the Baron. That's going to be a very risky attempt coming in. We may see some action very soon. None of the important cooldowns are down except on the side of Optimus does not have to shout away. Look at the amount of wards coming in. So the true shot barrage comes out. Does QTV have a snipe? The snipe does come out. Five goes in, unable to counter snipe it. The 50-50 goes in favor of SAJ. So they do pick up a 21 minute Baron and has that gold lead extended to about 4.5 thousand gold. A very risky Baron don't you think Kyling? SAJ is very fond of this kind of place where Randomly through the game where there will be periods where the five of them actually stick together on one lane, not caring about the other lane. And sometimes it backfires, but in this case, they get a kill, they rush a Baron, and they successfully snipe it as well. So, end up a good play for QT uh, for SDJ, even though they did lose both towers and all Yeah, that could have gone extremely horrible for them. Imagine if HK picks up that Baron. We had Engor on the side picking up two turrets, though of the outer turret as well as the inner turret. Look at QTV, extremely tanky, just dueling out with both members. Now Juni comes in, he does have the boost of mobility though, but the force to actually arcane shape as well as Dragon's Descent away. I was about to say, QTV with that Spirit Visage, that Rengar is gonna just be super, super tanky. Yep, right now with Venom buff on SAJ, I'm just waiting for QTV on Rengar to pop his ultimate and combo with Optimus or Rihanna out. Yeah, that's going to be very scary. The True Shot Barrage does come down, just tries to deal some damage to the minions. Q Archie does take a hit to the face on that one, but we do see Safety kind of just split push onto the side. I like to see which skills he has decided to evolve. So Evolve Wings as well as Enlarged Claw. So he will have that reset on his leap into the fight coming in and making that split push, putting some pressure onto the lane itself and that Sweeping Lens will not be able to spot this ward out but does kill one more ward. So SAJ will start sieging up the inner turret for against HKN. I don't really see anything that HKN can do. Mythic Q doesn't have his ultimate up just yet. And the siege potential coming in very dangerous. The shot wave comes out, hits onto Edgar. Edgar just melts straight away. Fire gets stunned up, taken down extremely low. The command attack and dissonance combo will force them to kind of back off. And SAJ has the superior engage as well as siege comp coming in. Whoa, we do have safety go in. Leaps on, takes perhaps down to less than half HP. Picks up the inner turret, a flash coming in from Juni, but Pasa has flashed away as well. That bowler strike and Optimus will just completely melt Pasa in the face. SAJ will pick up the inhibitor as well, but the lead comes in from safety, takes perhaps down very low as well. And it just seems that SAJ has that commanding lead coming into this game. They will rotate down to this turret, inner turret here, in the, in the bot lane, sorry. And SAJ will start to hammer it away, easily pick up that one. They have an ex Extended, sorry, they have extended their goal lead to about 7,000 over gold coming into this game and they are not stopping aggression, they do have that Baron buff for the regen and will continue to just poke it down and got taken down very low, force to flash away, Mythic Q goes in with the Dragon's Descent, the Soul Shackles onto perhaps, perhaps will just melt in the face, Mythic Q tries to do as much damage and all the culling will come out, Edgar will melt, the barrier will not save him, QTV in the back line, taken down very low, will die to the shot of the turret however, but double kill onto safety, Pasa gets hit by the shockwave, he will melt as well, and an ace on the side of SAJ, SAJ, just destroys HKA in this game. I think the main thing for me for both fights so far, both at me and Bottom, was that uh, perhaps on Morgana was unable to shield his AD carry for carry start and that contributed to them losing every fight. Yeah, he didn't pull off any important black shields. We didn't see some spectacular black shields coming in. The depth timers are still very, very low, 25 minutes into the game. But the extended siege allowed them to pick up two inhibitor turrets two nexus turrets as well as two inhibitors and they do get multiple kills they extend their goal lead right now to about let's see oh my goodness it's 12,000 gold yep so when they got baron SAJ will only 3k ahead after that fast forward 3 minutes later they're up 12k that is an extremely 
disgusting gold spike I would say so now we have some more important item pickups let's take a look at what items SAJ has decided to kind of pick up QTV will be building into the Trinity Force very soon Trinity Force on Ranga is gonna be gonna allow him to output a lot of damage perhaps now in a little bit of trouble QTV just there to kind of be a nuisance and Kha'Zix has the Spirit of the Elder Lizard as well as the Last Whisper and the Brutalizer so he's not going to go for a Dinter Bloodthirster build so he's just gonna stack a lot of armor penetration and probably build into some tanky items the Zarnia's Hourglass as well as the Death Cap already completed onto Optimus that's gonna deal an insane amount of damage and allow him to go into stasis for a while just to get his cooldowns back up and on the side of Archie he's gonna be a wrecking ball I feel because the Trinity Force and Bloodthirster come gonna output a lot of damage here HK wants to defend this out of turret but I don't think there's in a turret sorry I don't think there's much, there's much that they can do The Glacial Shroud onto Tarek Probably gonna build into a Frozen Heart Allows him to get more aura on his Shatter itself Because he can't currently scales based on his um, bonus armor The Shout Wave combo coming in with the jump onto QTV Fire gets taken out very low Perhaps will melt in the face QTV is unable to die at this point of time And it feels that SAJ has that commanding lead, they can just dive as many turrets as they want, they ignore the inhibitor turret in the top lane, and got taken down very low, a double kill coming out for Archie, and there's nothing that HK can do, SAJ will take game 1, commanding fashion. Yup, well played by SAJ, and I would say the MVP for this game is definitely Optimus, putting all those...